Hi, you guys. Okay, I have a few things I needed to unpack about Scandival. I want to call it scummable now, though. It's kind of scummy. It's moved, you know, the move down the spectrum from a scandal to scummy because I'm watching the show and it's so cringe. I mean, Ariana is sticking up for Raquel and she's saying Ariana's like her closest friend with everybody and she's, it's just sick. It's just sick knowing that she's hooking up with her boyfriend. It's like crazy. Um, and it looks like some people are speculating that they might have had a thruple. I don't think so though. Raquel, Ariana, and Tom Sandoval. To me, it feels like just a straight up betrayal. She trusted Tom Sandoval and he let her down and she trusted everyone. But I mean, it's devastating, devastating stuff. Well, I'm going to play for you Howie Mandel, a little clip about why did the interview the way he did with Tom Sandoval. Um, I heard people covering it and read some articles about it, but it didn't do it justice. I want you to hear it for yourself. I'm going to be talking about all these side gigs that, you know, all these Vanderpump Rules people are doing. And then I want to talk to you about um, the crazy sabotaging of Vanderpump Rules that's happening. I'll explain. So this happened yesterday. Supposedly Raquel's account got hacked and that's why all of her moments got deleted except for one where she and Tom Sandoval are like dressed up as each other for Halloween. It definitely stood out to everyone as being really a huge sign that they were dating that like everybody's like, how did we miss this? Anyway, uh, she posted this, which you guys have probably heard about, but I wanted to bring it up. It said, this account was hacked and with the help of Instagram, it has been reset and is now managed by Raquel's team for the next month while she continues treatment. May is Mental Health Awareness Month, so Raquel has requested all of the posts focus on raising awareness for mental health organizations, advocates, and removing the stigma surrounding treatment. I mean, give me a damn break. <laughs> First of all, since when does Raquel have a team? She's been on the show for what, like two years? I mean, what? A team? And, uh, I mean, I've never seen an account be hacked and not have something be sold on it. That's like the whole reason they hack your account. So, I mean, it, unless it was like a fan that hacked her account and then, you know, deleted all the moments and, and did showed one on there that, you know, would embarrass Raquel, maybe that's possible. But every time my account's been hacked and it's happened, they're selling crypto, they're trying to get you to invest in something, they're trying to sell you a diet thing. I've never seen it like that. So that smells like a rat. And I'm not talking a New Jersey rat, a different type of rat, a real As one. You guys know, I believe she was with Tom Sandoval and Canyon Ranch. I do not think she's seeking mental health treatment. I think this is just more manipulation and mind games like they did on the TV show that we just watched. I mean, I'm never believing anything this girl says again, and nor should you. And narcissist nut job Sandoval is touring on his band like nothing's happening, like everything's great. He went on his like retreat to Canyon Ranch and he was all spiritual and he drove his motorbike and he hiked a mountain and all this crap. And now he's on a plane going on his tour. He's a cuckoo. Let me play the video. As well as dessert, we go. Um, New York. Drink, so, so this is what Howie Mandel said was the setup with the famous Sandoval interview, the only one he gave to Howie Mandel. This is what he told Howie behind the scenes. And this is taken from the Vile Files, by the way. Just listen. At you, and I'm so, and honestly, sincerely sorry that you're dealing with those nasty messages. I always find it crazy that these people who are probably like worried about Ariana's mental health are the same people telling you you should die in the DMs <laughs> and things like that. It's, you know, the internet bullying is wild, but, but yeah, like people often don't realize what they want as an entertainer. Like you entertain people. That was one of the most interesting podcasts I'd listened to in a long I time. I sort of feel like Nick Viles kissing Howie Mandel's ass a little here. 
but maybe he had to. <laughs> Just saying. Do you know why I have this on my face when I say that? Yeah, I'll let you guess. That is actually what shocked me. I had like two pages of questions because I assumed after being in the media for so long that he would come on and it would be an apology or very short answers to questions. Like I, and then within maybe 10 minutes of bantering back and forth, he was off. He was talking. Oh, he wanted to talk. Yeah, he, he wanted, wanted to, talk to talk and tell his side of the story. So we didn't even need to say anything because he, and I think that the public then, if he just talks, they'll either decide whether he's digging himself into a hole or he's redeeming himself. Yeah. So I, the only one I even said to him after, I said, listen, I'm not going to challenge you on anything. And uh, to be honest with you, without knowing the other side or, or having any input, he came off like a guy who was really troubled and having a real hard time. And I condoned him for being open about even just his mental health issues. Oh, I'm that not- explains why he cheated on Ariana, because he has mental health issues. Right. Because that's for them to... To be open about, but he said he's suffering with depression. He said he didn't know, uh, you know, what he was going to do with his life at this point, this middle aged point Raquel that he's at. That. You know, it, and I, I said, you know, he's it is years to old. be to seem that uh, frail publicly is kind of brave. So I can, you know, and then I also said at the end of it, if there's anything that you think you said that you uh, want to. Uh, have edited out I'll, I'll do that sure so what you saw was what he was happy with saying and what he presented and i kind of respected that whether you know something else because you have a different from my perspective i respected what he said i didn't i don't know i didn't know anything else to challenge him on what could possibly be a lie or it's not even a, I, oh oh I don't, I think he told his truth for sure, uh, you know. You think he believed what he was saying? Oh, yeah. I find it shocking that people believe him. He's a liar. He'd say anything. He doesn't feel anything about anyone ever, except that he loves himself. He loves himself so much. I, the only question I wish one of you would have asked was, why does he think he cheated? He told you. He, that whole interview was justifying why I, he cheated. But I want to know why. No, no. I want to know why Tom Sandoval, in that moment of weakness, you know, chose to One do One moment. It's like 80 moments. go to Ariana and not cheat. You know, like, because he was saying, I'll answer that from what he said. Because I think he did answer that question. You're saying we should have asked that. No, but that's that not why it. he cheated. That's, the, the cheating is the. That joke. he's turning 40 years old. He's incredibly depressed. He has been trying to get out of this relationship from which she wouldn't release him. That's well, that's not true. Well, that's but I'm telling you what I I heard. You know, that's not true because of what you know. Well, I'm not saying it's not true because short of him accusing Ariana of like entrapping him and imprisoning him, like she can't stop him from breaking up. Well, I'm telling you. From somebody who has not watched the show, what I heard, and you can tell me true. if what I heard isn't true, he said he's 40 years old, his life is in a little bit of disarray, he's going through an incredible depression, he doesn't feel that he is appreciated in his mm-hmm. um, relationship, or even as a as a man, he said that he wasn't getting any sex, and she was making it really hard for him, that's what he said. Yeah. He said... He has tried to get out and end the relationship. She is not letting him out. In fact, he told me whether this is true or not. He told me that she even after he said it's not working and I want out. She said, let's freeze our eggs. And he said on my podcast, Mm -hmm. are you crazy? We've been trying to break up. Why are you even asking me this? Which now we know. No, no, no. no, But I'm not questioning whether it's true or not this is what i'm hearing well, who for the cares first time. what so you're hearing it's i'm bullshit. hearing this without any point of <laughs> reference why would i que- why would i question that because well well because it sounds I, like well, how nonsense I would is, there are a lot of 40 year old sad people who might be suffering from depression who might feel disconnected from their partner who don't cheat 
that's not a that's no, not a reason. So, so to wait, shoot. wait, wait, wait. And then he said it was wrong. And then he said he was seeking help. The where he was seeking help and who was open to giving so he him goes help. on to say that Raquel was offering him mental health. So this is Raquel, who we just watched on tonight's episode, say that she'd lost her way in the world, started weeping because she no longer had the pageant circuit and she was 28 and her whole life had been put out before her because of the pageant circuit. And and she felt really lost now that the pageant circuit was gone and now she might not even want to do what her job that was supposed to be therapy or whatever for kids that had disabilities. Uh, and she starts to cry and now she feels like she can maybe uh, not be a goody two shoes anymore. I mean, cut the. This is just bullshit. Just horrific nonsense. And and Tom Sandoval saying he's getting life advice at forty from her is like laughable. No shock to anyone, of course. Lala is very cuddly with Howie Mandel now and will be coming on his show to show him how to light his studio better and will be doing her own version of events. Lala's been doing a lot of side gigs these days. Uh, she's going to be on an ABC special. It is not about Randall Emmett. It is about <laughs> children and being an advocate for children in some way. I'm not sure if it ties back to the Balenciaga scandal or some other situation to do with child trafficking or whatever, but I think it has to do with, you know, advocacy for children. This particular impact special, it's probably surrounding one of the pop culture moments that happened recently. So I know Lala was very vocal about uh, the Balenciaga scandal and how she was very anti you know, very upset with the brand for doing that as a public figure. And a lot of public figures were more neutral because they were, you know, maintaining their relationship with Balenciaga. And Lala was sort of unique in that she didn't really do that. I mean, she doesn't have a deal with them, but, you know, she was very vocal against it. So I'd say that's, you know, maybe how they're using her as like a commentator from that whole scandal and her different position. But I don't know. There's Lala shooting ABC. I think it's for impact, I want to say, from the way that that looks. Interesting that she did ABC. I would be worried about doing that if I were her because she has such a strong relationship with Bravo and NBC. But I guess they said it was all right based on the fact that it had to do with, um, you know, children and a cause. I'm not suggesting that people are leveraging Ariana's misery. But it seems to be working out great for everybody but Ariana at this moment. However, if you saw my video about her man, her guy that she's dating, he's so hot. She's doing so okay. <laughs> Here's Kristen Doty's new show. It's called The Goat, and the contestants do mental, physical, and social challenges. There's 14 contestants. And they're all, I guess, ex-reality stars, and they're all vying for a cash prize. You can see Jill Zarin's also on it. It's going to be on Amazon Freebie. There'll even be some Shaws of Sunset on it, and uh, Ray's is going to be on this one, too. He was also on... Gee, they're really pimping out these people, huh? What was he on? Uh, the... Uh, oh, The Trader. Reza was on The Trader. Kristen also made her way back to Andy Cohen's clubhouse and was actually allowed to come back and do an interview, whatever the hell they call that show, party show with him. So it's great. Thank God Ariana asked her to do all this spokesperson work for her. That That's what she said happened. So thank goodness for Ariana doing this for Kristen because it seems to be helping her a lot and getting her podcast a lot of attention too, which is great. How do you like this? This is Doja Cat's Met Gala look. I love it. I kind of dig it. <laughs> I was surprised that the list said that Kylie Jenner and Paris Hilton were some of the worst dressed at the Met Gala. They said Paris Hilton looked boring and like a witch and Kylie Jenner looked like she was wearing a costume for a superhero. No, she didn't. They didn't say that, but I did. Okay. <laughs> I was 
sorry. Sorry, that was so mean. It, she's a great body. She could wear anything. It looks good. <laughs> so as you guys know, there was a season finale teaser that was uh, released early by someone. It was a rough cut. They were missing the footage that Kristen Doty is making a... Uh, like a quick cameo in the final episode of season 10, which of course some fans are really excited about. Um, Raquel notably says, you know how we said we would never do this if we didn't think it was worth it, which was kind of mind blowing. She's also laughing about Scandival with someone very strange. And then Oh, there was a scene too where Raquel's talking to James Kennedy in the final that wasn't in the leaked copy. Now, this is what Radar said about the investigation Bravo's doing. Social media was set on fire Tuesday when a version of the Scandal season finale made its rounds, and Radar Online can exclusively reveal that Bravo is actively looking into the leak since the person released the wrong version. Our sources say the mistake makes it easier to trace back to the culprit. We're also told the leak forced Bravo to release the trailer earlier than production had planned. Sounds like someone disgruntled did this. Hmm. Who do you think it is? I think I want to leave it on that note. Like, subscribe, and hit the notification button, and let me know what you think about all this. (laughs) And who leaked this? Who's trying to sabotage Vanderpump Rules? You know, I mean, first, first Raquel gets hacked and then this seems like something's up. Or is this all Vanderpump Rules production company being clever about getting even more exposure of the show so it doesn't fizzle out before the end of the season and the reunion? What do you guys think? All right, I look forward to reading your comments as I always do. And big kiss.